now we will see about the extra intestinal amoebiasis this extra intestinal amoebiasis is sometimes asked as short notes so uh, what does that extra intestinal amoebiasis mean this means that amoebiasis at any other site other than the intestine generally we have seen that the ant amoeba histolytica infests into the intestines that is called as the intestinal amoebiasis but when it uh, uh, goes from intestine to any other sites that is called as the extra intestinal amoebiasis so when the intermember histolytica causes amoebiasis it presents as dysentery dysentery means frequent stools which are bloody in nature but when the amoebiasis is not treated uh, on time this leads to complications this leads to the complications as the entamoeba histolytica migrates uh, outside from the intestine and and uh, reaches to some other organs in the body and thereby causes the extra intestinal amoebiasis so in other words we can say that the extra intestinal amoebiasis is nothing but a complication of the intestinal amoebiasis if the intestinal amoebiasis is not treated on time so what is the pathogenesis then of the extra intestinal amoebiasis the pathogenesis is so the pathogenesis is that uh, we have seen that endomyelial histolytica infection begins with the quadrinucleated cyst so when the quadrinucleated cyst enter in the human through the fico oral route that is the mode of transmission uh, by ingestion of the contaminated food and water that is the source of infection so when it uh, when the quadrinucleated cyst reaches to the uh, or enters into the human through the fico oral route by the ingestion of the contaminated food and water there occurs the first stage that it goes through is the excitation excitation means uh, coming out from the cystic stage so it uh, goes from the i mean it uh, comes out from the cystic stage and this occurs in the Uh, small intestine and there after the cystic stage uh, is uh, re- i mean it comes out from the cystic stage the four trophozoites which were there in the quadrinucleated cyst those four trophozoites they are released into the small intestine the next stage it goes through is the multiplication so trophozoites they multiply by the binary fission and they increase in the number there and as they increase the number there occurs the fourth stage uh, uh, that is the colonization so then the colonization of the intestine begins and as the colonization uh, is occurring some of the trophozoites what do they do they penetrate the mucosa of the large intestine and muscularis mucosa and localize into the submucosa so they are penetrating the mucosa and submucosa and localizing into the submucosa and when uh, if there is extensive erosion so uh, as they are colonizing they penetrate and when the penetration is very uh, i mean extensive uh, then the trophozoites gain access into the portal circulation and via the portal circulation they may reach to the different organs of the body now what are those organs and uh, by which route they uh, reach to different organs is are so the trophozoites trophozoites in the intestinal mucosa by the mesenteric veins reaches to the portal vein and from portal vein there is to the liver and there they cause the amoebic liver abscess so the liver is the most common organ where this end extra intestinal amoebiasis occur and from the mucosa from the mucosa it may go to the inferior mesenteric vein and from there to the spleen causing splenic abscess and uh, can reach to the splenic abscess and from the liver through the hepatic veins it, it can go to the ivc then to the heart to the pulmonary circulation and then to the lungs causing the lungs abscess then it can uh, uh, as it is reaching to the heart so it can go to the systemic circulation also and there may cause the brain abscess so what uh, here we see the complications of the intestinal amoebiasis as well so what are the complications of the intestinal amoebiasis it can cause the amoebic liver abscess 
it can cause the splenic abscess it can cause the lung abscess and it can cause the brain abscess so these are the four complications of the intestinal amoebiasis and these four are the same uh, pathogenesis of the extra intestinal amoebiasis as well okay and these four are the sites of extra intestinal amoebiasis as well so uh, by remembering this we can answer a lot of questions from this topic now coming to the lab diagnosis how will we diagnose the extra intestinal amoebiasis so for diagnosing the extra intestinal amoebiasis we can perform the microscopy of the pus where the presence of trophozoites confirms the diagnosis so uh, a stool microscopy is the microscopy of the stool is useless uh, we generally do not do the microscopy of the stool because we will not get the trophozoites in the stool microscopy but if we get the abscess if we get the abscess of the liver abscess of the uh, spleen or abscess of the lung or a brain and if we detect the trophozoites in that abscess that may help in the diagnosis of the extra intestinal amoebiasis so that is the microscopy of the pus the stool microscopy is not important then we have some antigen detection as well so in antigen detection we detect the lectin antigen in the serum the lectin antigen is of the lectin antigen is of the entamoeba histolytica so by detecting the lectin antigen also we can detect the extra intestinal amoebiasis and the antibody which has been generated against those uh, antigens lectin antigen they can also be detected by the method of ELISA and that may also help in the diagnosis other than that we have the molecular methods in molecular PCR real-time PCR and multiplex PCR these PCR methods are also there by which we can diagnose so extra intestinal amoebiasis can be diagnosed by microscopy of pus by uh, antigen detection by antibody detection and by molecular methods these are all the diagnosis of uh, diagnostic uh, methods by which we can diagnose the extra intestinal amoebiasis and the site of the extra intestinal amoebiasis the clinical features the clinical features depend upon the site uh, the amoebiasis extra intestinal amoebiasis is involving like if it, if it is involving the liver there will be jaundice there will be pain in the epigastric pain will be there jaundice will be there and so on this type of uh, symptoms will be there and uh, if it is involving lungs then symptoms related to the respiratory symptoms uh, and respiratory tract will be there okay and uh, likewise the depending upon the side the clinical features will vary next comes the prevention how can we prevent this type of disease so prevention is simply if we uh, do the sanit if we take the sanitary measures if we uh, um, um, apply the i mean if we have the provision for the safe water and safe food supply then this case uh, cases of this uh, amoebiasis can be decreased because the uh, basic cause for this amoebiasis is the our uh, the quadrinucleated uh, quadrinucleated cysts that is the infective form which is getting into into, into the body and causing this all uh, amoebiasis so by preventing the entry of that quadrinucleated cyst into the body by taking some sanitary measures providing safe water safe food supply and provision for uh, safe and uh, good water to the uh, people we can decrease them and by using sanitary latrines we can uh, decrease the uh, cases of this amoebiasis similarly if you see the amoebic liver abscess the amoebic liver abscess sometimes the question is asked on amoebic liver abscess also the questions the answer to that amoebic liver abscess will also be the same as the extra intestinal amoebiasis just you have to do certain changes and you can write the uh, same answer for amoebic liver abscess as well so you prepare the short notes by your own